Hey Pretty Kitty, this is my vlog where I talk about all the things I love about sewing. And September makes, I have not got many. I was looking through and thinking I must have made more than that and I really didn't make much in September so this might be quite a short one. Um, I will show you the things I did make though, one of which I'm wearing and this um, top leaves me feeling a bit meh, not sure. Uh, sometimes you make things Oh, and by the way, sad day for vlogging. The ironing board is broken. It's all mod cons here, I'm telling you. Uh, my vlog is usually filmed on an ironing board with a jam jar holding up my iPad, and the ironing board is broken. So sadly, you are on a tripod, and it's a bit echoey, probably. I don't know, let me know. If the sound quality is not great, I will get myself a little microphone to wear. Anyway, who needs an ironing board? I need an ironing board for sewing, so I need to buy a new one. Uh, this top is called the Astoria by Seamwork, and I've had this pattern for ages and ages. A friend of mine and I, we went halvesies on it because I wasn't too sure, and um, sometimes that's quite a good way to get, um, you know, uh, ch affordable sewing patterns because they can be quite expensive. And if you have a friend that loves sewing too and you both want to make something, I can't see any problem in um, sharing uh, a nice pattern. So we bought the Astoria together. Um, I don't know whether or not Emma's made her Astoria, but uh, I've had it printed out for ages and wasn't sure whether or not um, it was my sort of style and I'm still not sure. This fabric was from um, Fabricland. It's a sort of winter jersey they call it, feels almost like woolly, it's got a nice handle to it, it's kind of soft and snuggly and, and I have to admit when I saw this in the shop I was a little bit like oh I'm not sure about that print, is it me, is it not and I should have listened to my gut feeling because even now it's made up I'm not really sure about it and I don't really know if it's the right pattern for me but anyway let's talk about the pattern. Um, so the Astoria is a uh, cropped sweater, um, I think it works best with um, skirts or dresses, so you know that kind of 50s style um, big full skirt with a short cropped jumper on the top and um, that's partly the reason why I was kind of a bit unsure about whether to make one because I'm not really a 50s skirt kind of a girl, I'm more of a pencil skirt kind of a girl. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, it fits really well. I used, I think I made a size small, um, and the only measurement that was going to be a bit tight for that was the waist measurement. So I didn't use, um, I didn't have much of a seam allowance. I just sewed it all together on my overlocker and it's actually turned out to fit just fine. There are no cuffs on the sleeves, it's just turned over in twin needles or zigzagged actually. And there's a cuff on the bottom. It's got this kind of high neckline, rounded neckline, which is quite a flattering shape I think. And then this is the issue, okay, I'll stand up so you can see. So, it's really short. I mean, it's meant to be short, the pattern says it's short. I added an inch because I've got quite a long torso anyway. And you can see these are ready to wear jeans and they're sitting on my natural waist and this top just sits on your natural waist so there isn't really any room for lifting your arms in the air without peeking a little bit of uh, something you might not want other people to see so yes I think this top will work best with a jersey dress underneath it. So I've seen lots of people use this pattern with the Minetta dress, which is a um, t-shirt style jersey dress with a gathered skirt. And um, I think that's how this will work best. But because it's a busy pattern, I think I need to go for something plain, a navy blue, um, and uh, I feel more secure if I'm wearing a dress maybe underneath it. But then the issue with that is I have had all my wardrobe out trying to see what I could wear this with and because the neckline is fairly wide any dress that you wear underneath is going to have to have a similar shaped neckline because otherwise you're just going to see it. So yeah I'm not sure if it's a fail. I mean it's not a fail in terms of it was a nice pattern to work with, the sizing was very true. Um, 
don't know, do you make stuff sometimes and just think, nah, I'm not sure. And I hate wasting fabric and I hate making things uh, just for the sake of it. Um, I want to be able to wear my clothes. I don't want to waste the fabric, but I'm not sure about this one. Maybe you guys will think it's looking nice and you can let me know down below. So the other thing I made in September was a present and it was my mummy's birthday and I really wanted to make her something. She's been going on for ages and ages that I never make her anything and it's about time you made me something. And I'm quite a selfish sewist. I quite like to make myself stuff. People ask me all the time, uh, if, will you make one of these for me? I'll pay you to make something for you. And you just think, oh, I don't know. I mean, people never want to pay what things are worth anyway, because by the time you've spent the money on the fabric and you've uh, run it up and the hours it takes to make something, it's never worthwhile. And so I'm quite a selfish sewist. I don't know about you guys. Um, but if someone asks me to make them something, I'm like always a bit like, mm. whereas if it's a gift, I love making people gifts. So I wanted to make my mum something that she could wear, something that doesn't involve any fitting because um, it's hard to make stuff, clothes for other people. Uh, you just can't, I mean, she's got quite a full bust, so I'd be looking at a full bust adjustment. And then you have to sort of spoil the surprise because you need to make a toile and she'd have known about it and it just seemed like a daft idea. So I went for something very simple and it's the Sky Wrap. And the Sky Wrap is by Cool Crafting. And I've seen this wrap everywhere. So if you go to any of the knitting and stitching shows um, or Festival of Quilts, I think they sometimes go to, uh, they're, they're often got a stand. And um, I think Luna Lapin, I think there is a connection between Cool Crafting and Luna Lapin because they always have Luna Lapins on their stall as well. So this Sky Wrap I've seen year after year. I thought to myself, gosh, that's really simple. It looks like it'd be a really nice make. Um, but um, yeah, never really sort of bought the pattern and got down to it. So for my mum, I chose some beautiful fabric from um, Franklin's, which is a local um, fabric stall. And it's a navy blue coating. So I don't know if you can see very well there. I am going to put this on Agatha in a bit and show you properly. Um, but I would just wanted to show you close up these gorgeous buttons. They are like a turquoise blue and they are iridescent. And I mean, they're fairly expensive as buttons go. I think they were £2.50 each, but you only need three. And they really set this fabric off because I've chosen this gorgeous sort of cotton, I think it's either a cotton lawn or a cotton poplin um, lining and the turquoise in the lining fabric and the turquoise on those buttons just seem to go together really nicely. So I will cut to Agatha so she can show you in more detail what this garment looks like on. So here's Agatha modelling the sky wrap. I'll stand back a bit and pan down so you can see what it looks like. It's two rectangles of fabric, one is smaller than the other, that becomes the lining. And then if I come in close, you can see that the neckline is just folded down so that you get this nice flash of the lining. And then three enormous buttons hold it onto the side. And then the um, lining inside, you've got the lovely board around the outside that you get when you have um, if you've ever made a coat, you'll know how that's done, but I don't want to give too much away because, you know, uh, they're trying to sell a pattern here. But if you are an ex uh, experienced seamstress, you could probably work out how to make this yourself. I uh, just really, really love it. I'm glad my mum likes it. Oh, and also I put, if that will focus, a little handmade with love label in it so that, um, yeah, I made it a special, special birthday gift for my mum. So I hope you enjoyed looking at that sky wrap a bit closer up. Um, I really want to make myself one now. I feel like I could do something kind of quite fun on the inside, maybe a leopard print or a zebra print or something a little bit snazzier. Um, let me know what you think. I'm thinking maybe grey, pale grey would look lovely for the winter. I've got some grey jeans and I'm quite liking the whole uh, column look where you use the same colour for all your clothes. 
Um, yeah, so um, apart from that, I only ever made two other things and they're bunnies and one of which you've seen already. So I've already shown you this Luna Lapin doll. If this is your first time with me today, welcome. Please press the subscribe button if you like what you see. Um, yeah, so this video, uh, this video, this rabbit um, is a Luna Lapin and you guys have seen this one before and I made another one. So we've got two babies coming in the family, which is really exciting can't wait I've gotten stuck in oh I did make something else I'll have to go and get it hang on one tick I knew there was something else I've made I'll show you that next um yeah so this bunny I've made out of a felted sweatshirt that belonged to my grandmother-in-law and so my husband's granny and it was a hundred percent mohair I think um, might have been cashmere, can't remember. Anyway, it got thrown in the washing machine by accident and shrank and um, it was a Cynthia Rowley jumper. So, you know, seems such a shame to waste something like that. And it's perfect for making a little bunny. So this bunny, my second Luna Lapin, um, has Liberty, vintage Liberty fabric on the feet and in the ears. And you probably will have recognized this fabric because I've made pattern weights out of this fabric. It was a skirt that belonged to my other grandmother-in-law. And um, so it's really nice that I've reused a couple of really gorgeous fabrics to make this bunny. And then when I was busy sewing it up, and it's all hand sewn, uh, pretty much, which is lovely and relaxing. I put the telly on, I had, I mean, it was raining outside, I put something really interesting I wanted to watch on the telly, and I just sat in front of the TV and just sewed this whole bunny. It took me about five hours. Um, but yeah, it was a lovely way to spend uh, my day that day. And um, I wanted to make it really, really special, so I've used my granny's vintage buttons so I've shown you these as well in a previous vlog, the one with the shark shirt, so I'll pop a card in above if you want to go and watch that one. These vintage buttons my um, nan had in her button box and sadly she's not with us anymore and I had two left and I had no idea what to do with these two. I used the other three, I think there were three, on the shirt for my son and I just thought I'll put them on on the bunny so um, yeah they've got movable arms um, I the only thing I'm going to change with this bunny is I think the color of the eyes because they're a bit dark and they sort of get lost in this fabric so I am going to try and find in my button box a couple more small buttons a, a paler gray but yeah little pom-pom tail so that's the second one and I'm done with the lunas for a bit so like I said there's two babies coming um, and uh, the next baby make that I have made is the dandelion dungarees from So Over It. And I used some gorgeous fabric that came from Luby Doo Fabrics. And oh, look, it's so tiny. I almost want another baby, and then I came to my senses and thought, ah, ridiculous. But you know how baby clothes just make your ovaries ache a bit? You just think, oh, they're so sweet. So this dandelion dungaree pattern um, is a sort of basic shape with a reversible fun function, although you can't really reverse it because of the buttons, but it's fully lined. And I've used this mustard coloured, um, I think it's Pontiroma, and it's a melange Pontiroma. So if you can see up close, it's got like a grey fleck running through it, which goes really well with the grey of the polar bear fabric. I've used two buttons up here. You can use snaps. I was originally going to put snaps on it. And then I thought, hmm, I don't know. When you snap a snap, you have to press quite hard. And when it's on the shoulders, I know you could put your fingers inside. I just thought maybe buttons would be better. And I have sewn them on really, really well so that they don't um, come off. Um, and I just, I don't know. I just thought the look of the buttonhole and the button was a bit nicer. Got little turn ups at the bottom. Uh, the only thing about this pattern is it kind of looks a bit of wide. I mean, it's I know it's meant to be sort of like baggy and relaxed, but it, it looks very wide and quite short. And this is the newborn size, so we shall see how it fits when the baby eventually arrives. But that's one of them. Um, and I will have to tell the people in question not to watch these vlogs because it's got to be a surprise. I've got a second one cut out and I showed you the fabric for that in the last video. It's kind of like a 
minty greeny colour um, fabric and what's it got on it? It's got animals on it. Pop back and watch the previous video if you want to see that fabric. Anyway, so that's all I made in September. It feels like I didn't make very much. I made one thing for me and then uh, one, two, three, four things for other people. So I guess the other people's things kept me busy. Um, and I will be back with you soon with my autumn inspiration video. So um, if you like my video, please do the business. If you press the bell down there, it will tell you whenever I upload a new video so you can catch up with what I've been up to. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye!